Welcome to the second installment of our Getting Started with CrowdSec series. In this second video, I'll be showing you how you can use the CrowdSec console to review and visualize all of the attack attempts that have been identified and blocked by CrowdSec across all of your online applications and services. So for the purpose of this walkthrough, I have switched from my personal console account to the CrowdSec account, which is what we use internally to protect all of our applications and systems, just to give you an idea of what the console looks like when you are managing multiple security engines. But one thing to note here, I have turned on anonymous mode, um, which you can find at the bottom of the console page, just to protect any sensitive information. So some of the names you see in here may look a bit strange and that's because they have been randomly generated because I'm in on anonymous mode. So when we're in the console UI, if we click into the alerts tab, we will get a complete overview of what IP addresses are attacking our online services and through which attack vector. So the default view that you see here will actually show you all of the alerts that have been generated across all of your security engine deployments. So this is the view that I'll be walking you through in this video, but you can actually filter by a number of different options, such as the source IP, the autonomous system, the country, the scenario, or in other words, the attack type by security engine, by any tags that you have set up and by alert context. So alert context is something that I'll be explaining a bit later in this video. You can also filter by time. So you can filter by minutes, hours, days, or months, um, or all time, if you really want to drill down into a specific period of alerts. So users on one of our paid for plans will also have the option to enable noise cancellation, which you can see here. So this feature, we introduced it to really reduce alert fatigue and reduce the amount of alerts that security teams see by filtering out background noise. So in the context of CrowdSec, background noise really refers to automatic and mild attacks that are often conducted at a large scale over a long period of time without any specific target in mind, such as mass scanning attacks or brute forcing attempts on various popular services. So you can see here, if I actually enable noise cancellation, I will reduce the amount of alerts that I can see here by roughly 80%. So again, the idea of this feature is to really minimize alert fatigue for security teams and allowing you to really drill down and focus on the more severe attacks and the attacks that have been targeted and are more relevant to your infrastructure. So to walk you through some of these visualization charts, this first chart here will display the source IP data. So this will reveal the most active IP addresses that have been targeting your online services. And again, because I'm in anonymous mode, these IP addresses have been blanked out. But if you hover over some of the IPs, you will be able to see what country they're actually hosted from. The second chart here breaks down the common autonomous system numbers linked to the IP addresses targeting our systems. And again, again, because I'm in anonymous mode, the hosting provider names have been blanked out and they're randomly generated, as you can see. The scenario chart here will offer you a view into the most triggered scenarios, which as a reminder, represent the attack vectors that we've been targeted by. So you can see here that we've been targeted by numerous open SIPs requests, SSH brute forcing and server message blocks brute forcing. And then finally, the targeted security engines chart here will give us an overview of which of our security engines have been targeted or have identified the most malicious activity. If I scroll down the page, we will then be shown a list of all of the alerts that have been generated 
or all of the attack attempts or intrusion attempts that our CrowdSec deployments have blocked. So some of the context we get here are when the attack type, when the attack occurred, what attack this IP address was actually exhibiting. Of course, the IP address responsible for the attack. And again, the security engine that was the target of the attack. Our users also have the option to add an additional column known as alert context. So often because a single security engine might be used to protect a wider perimeter, allowing security teams to get more precise information about specifically what is under attack and through what attack vector forms a really important part of their threat analysis and their automation. So because I'm in on anonymous mode, these tags here are randomly generated and blanked out. But if I take this server message block brute forcing attempt as an example, and I expanded these columns, what we would see here is exactly what type of data source was targeted, which, as I say, provides security teams a lot more context around what was at, what was at risk and whether any further action should be taken. If we look at this SSH brute forcing attack, these tags would actually show us what users were targeted. So if you do want to enable the alert context feature, it does require a bit of additional configuration, but I have linked a few resources that show you exactly how you can do that in the video description box just below the video. If I wanted to take a closer look at some of the IP addresses that have been blocked and identified as trying to attack my systems, Let's take this brute force attempt, this server message block brute force attempt as an example. I could actually click into the IP address and this will take me to the CrowdSec Threat Intelligence tab. So I'm not going to focus too much on this tab in this video. This video is mainly to walk you through the alerts tab and the kind of filtering you can do. But here I will get a full report on this IP address. So. To give you a brief walkthrough, you can see the country that has been hosted in, exactly where this IP address is located, the range of the IP and the autonomous system number. We can also see the type of attack that this IP address is known for. So as a reminder, all of this intelligence is based on the entire CrowdSec network. So we gather all of the intelligence that our users have seen across our entire user base and this forms our threat intelligence and the report that we can see here. So as I say, I won't walk through every element of the report that will be coming up in a subsequent video, but just to give you a high level overview, we can see here that this IP address does in fact belong to our community block list. In other words, a lot of users, within our network across the globe have reported this IP address. So we can have a very high confidence that this is a malicious IP and that yes, it should be blocked from our system. It will also show us a time period of when this IP um, address has shown aggressiveness, whether that was in the last 24 hours, the last week, month or all time. And finally, we can see which countries have been targeted most commonly by this IP address. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Hopefully it has given you a better understanding of exactly what context you can see within the console and what sort of visualization the console can provide you with when looking at the different types of attacks that your online applications or services have been targeted by. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Again, if there's anything that I've just explained that you would like some more context on or some more clarity, feel free to leave a comment. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if there's anything else you want help with, feel free to join the CrowdSec Discord server where one of our team will help you out.